I want to thank you guys for joining me again for this episode of Real News Today. I'm really excited to have my next guest, Candice. She is an author in the making. So right now she's working on a book and I'm really inspired by that because so many of us hear about, well, I have a story or people tell me I need to write a book and the fact that she's already taken that leap and she is working on it to me is commendable. So before we get into some of those questions about writing, how you do it, let me give Candace the opportunity to introduce herself. Hi, I'm, um, I'm Candace Rainey. Um, I'm a school teacher, I'm a high school school teacher. And um, writing has never been one of my things that I wanted to do. <laughs> it's okay. been furthest for me, but God, God kind of put it on me to kind of write a book. So. I finally stopped running from it and decided to go ahead and do it. So awesome. Yeah. Now I'm a mom, I'm a mom of two. Okay. I have a daughter and a son. Awesome. Um, they're 15 and five. So oh well, you know. quite a little gap there. Okay. Yeah. Like starting over. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> hey, been there, done that, girl. Except I got a bunch of ages in between the 15 and the five. I have okay. um, 15 children. And 10 oh, of them are still at home. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my. Oh, aren't you awesome? <laughs> hey, pray for me. You see the gray up here in the head. You see what I'm saying? Oh, you're doing good. <laughs> I would have way more than that. <laughs> you know, you got to know how to you camouflage are, you it. Look you know fabulous. what I'm saying? <laughs> Absolutely. Well, you don't look like you have it. Oh, uh, well, thank that. you. <laughs> God is good. You know what? It's yeah. it's amazing what you can do behind a, a Zoom camera, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, no, uh, you look good, honey. <laughs> well, thank you. So, um, you know, this is just great to be able to talk about some of the real things that people struggle with. You know, we grow up and we're like, oh, I'm not a writer. You know, that's not me. Or we remember those grades that we didn't get that were good in English or some of these other subjects. So how did you overcome? And I'm not saying that's your story, but you just said that you just didn't think of yourself as a writer. So how did you overcome that challenge of not seeing yourself as a writer and then becoming one? Um, it honestly, it's still a challenge. Like my deadline is tomorrow and I'm <laughs> still like piecing it and trying not to overthink it and you know um just think of all the things that could be wrong or think of how the outcome will be and all of that stuff so I just kind of sat down and kind of wrote and I I like to read mm -hmm. and that kind of freaked me out kind of reading a book I remember I picked up Michelle Obama's book and I was like I don't have 450 pages to give you guys. <laughs> like, right. I can't put my story into 450 pages. Like, so that kind of freaked me out thinking, mm -hmm. do I have to have that many pages? But right. I found a really good book. I found a really good book called um, Leap. Oh, and yeah. I've heard of that. Like, mm -hmm. um, and there's, hold on. <laughs> I got it. Okay. But, I'm a I'm a bookaholic. Okay, some people like shoes. Yeah, so oh, now look how little that and is. I, okay. And it and um it came up on my timeline on Instagram. Okay, and like literally, I bought it and I read it and I was like, it made me feel so much better because I felt like I didn't have to come up with four hundred pages to have a good book. So that really eased my mind. And she was quick, simple, simple, you know, quick, straight to the point. And like that helped me a lot with going with what I had to have. I didn't have to have a 50 page chapter or something right. like that. So I kind of, I kind of took the approach of just being who I am and I, you know, kind of struggling who that was like, okay, my grandma may not be like, uh, English teacher may want it to be, but I want the kids that I teach to read my book. Exactly. So it's for them to, they would be able to understand my book. So I love that, you yeah. know, and I think, you know, it's so funny because 
this is uh i just ha i have a book this is a book that i was a part of and it's going to be released okay. this week but um you know it's like you never really see yourself as that author you know that mm -hmm. what you're thinking of and you mm -hmm. go through like it's so funny like even if you have a little slang or a certain way you talk it's like oh i can't write like that you know what i mean it's right. gonna be proper and prim and you know, really your book should just be an extension of you. So it really takes mm -hmm. a little bit of coaching to kind of go get over that, you know, because it's like, yeah, you know, you're, you make it hard on yourself trying to be somebody you're not when it comes to writing yeah. rather than just saying what you would say and then just document mm -hmm. that on paper. But I don't know why we kind of get confused on that. So yeah, I'm glad yeah. you brought that up. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, what is your book about? It's actually, um, it started out because I got a cut. I got cut on my face. I got in a fight and I got cut. Uh -huh. And originally that's what it was going to be about. You know, uh -huh. um, me just explaining what happened and like my mindset going through it and kind of sharing the behind the scenes that people don't get. Right. Um, but then I kind of, took another angle and kind of talked about the lessons that I learned oh. through it. And it's called Purposefully Scarred. Oh. Um, so, you know, and that just kind of explains that in the purpose of me being scarred, like it's purpose behind it. And sometimes we kind of cry about why something happens to us. And we really got to find the purpose of why God put that on us. Amen. Um, so you know so it's lessons that we got to learn and then you know you go through the you hear people say all the time i take 10 steps forward or two steps forward and i take 10 steps back right. and that's because you're not learning the lessons that we should be learning in that moment you know oh, true. and that's kind of where i use the scars mm -hmm. um i use the stitches to kind of explain that you know that's good um mm -hmm. so that's, that's awesome. what it's kind of about. And I kind of talk about the lessons that I kind of learned throughout. Mm -hmm. um, well, the, yeah. And you know, you, to get through. And I think that really is a good point to bring up because, um, you know, it's kind of like where, when you get a shot and, you know, everybody hits that arm that you get a shot in and it's sensitive. Right. But over time, you become not, I wouldn't say immune to it, but it doesn't really um have as much of an impact on you as it does right. when you first start talking about it so I think I get that because I struggle with depression which is what my book is about um okay the struggles of 13 years of depression you know mm -hmm. and three hospitalizations and finally just having that point of saying you know what I'm tired of living like a victim feeling mm -hmm. sorry for myself you know, how can I move forward in a way that's going to serve others? So um, I totally get that. Now, so what was it that happened that allowed you to transform the thinking to it being a lesson rather than that mindset of this happened to me? Um, I kind of went through the stuff I wanted to talk about um, in the book. So they were kind of like lessons. And I, like I said, I teach. So it's stuff that I always deal with with my kids. And then, um, so when I decided to do the book, I was like, well, I'm gonna go ahead and do a photo shoot. My niece was coming in town to do my hair. So it was like, okay, um, the photographer said, so what kind of theme or what are you going for? And I was like, I don't know. <laughs> so I had to really think and, um, I had no pictures from when I first got scarred or anything. So we got this really great um, artist here. Mm -hmm. So I said, well, I'm going to get her to enhance it, to make it look. So I had to come up with, you know, I had to explain it to her what I wanted. So wow. that made me sit down and put together, okay, well, we're going to use the stitches as kind of putting yourself back together. And, you know, I got cut and it kind of split me open. But, it, you know, when you go through lessons, they're supposed to tear you all the way down. But wow. it's up to us to learn the lessons to put ourselves back together. 
Amen. Because I think at the end of the, the day, that's what really, you know, you go through all your obstacles for to I be a better that. person. I love that. Um, now, but thank you. So how do you, um, you know, somebody's watching who feels like, man, you know what? She doesn't know my story. My story was bad. And, you know, um, the liberation that you get, you know, the freedom mm-hmm. to be able to mm-hmm. tell your story as opposed to dealing with mm-hmm. knowing you have something to say and just keeping quiet. So for somebody who is like, they're on the fence and they're deciding, I don't know, what is my family going to think or my husband or my kids or worried about everybody else outside of them and they're on the fence about writing their story that is personal Mm -hmm. that affects them and their journey what would you say to them um you still have to like we have a voice so I feel like you still have to tell your story Mm -hmm. and um and it's a lot of things that I wrote that nobody knew you know because I wrote a little blog a few years ago and they like my family read it and they were like I didn't know any of this stuff Mm -hmm. but that was one of the things in my book and in my journey that I learned to protect my family you know what I'm saying so I kept some of the things from them so when I finally healed or finally felt it was okay I feel like everybody else could kind of be healed from it as well so I feel like you can wait until the time is right for you. Um, I know God put it on my spirit to write it. Um, I don't know about anybody else's, but if that's what God is kind of pushing you to do, um, do it. You know, and the people that support you and love you, they'll understand and they'll kind of come around and they'll understand. It's your story. Um, I love and that. I think we all have a story to tell. Um you know, so yeah, don't be scared to do it. And yes, it's going to be a lot of um, questions and doubt and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I, Lord knows the anxiety has been real trying to get through <laughs> this whole book of what people are going to say and mm-hmm. how they're going to take it and all of that stuff. But you got to kind of push through it. Um, yeah. Yeah, like, so yeah. True. you know, it, it's really like being your own advocate, you know, and I know mm-hmm. uh, in my in my own story, you know, I really didn't have that time to think and reflect. I was so busy mm-hmm. on autopilot that, you know, when you sit down to really put into words, wow, you know, why did that happen? Why was I right. doing this over and over again? You know, because you just don't know what you don't know until you heal from that then you're Mm -hmm. able to not be so caught up in the outcome. You know, Mm -hmm. you have a little bit of space to separate yourself where you don't feel like, oh, I'm bad if I had this experience. You can remove the judgment from yourself, which is a big deal in order to Mm -hmm. move forward, you know? Right, right, Mm -hmm. absolutely. Because, you know, it's still going to be people that will read my story and say, well, why did this happen? Or, you know, or, you know... And I kind of just, I will, I'm kind of blunt with mine. And I'm like, mm-hmm. well, this is what happened. And, you know, this is my story to tell. Exactly. Um, but, you know, people are still going to judge and have something to say. And you're not going to please everybody. So it is at the end of the day, um, as long as you're pleased with what you put out, with what you, put out you know, mm-hmm. that's all that matters. And hopefully you can help at least one person, you know, so true. you want to help somebody. So true. And I think that's really the main thing is really being able to use your voice because, you know, I I have a house full of kids and it's so funny. um, Mm -hmm. We have our older kids and they just have a different story that they're tell that they tell. It's like, oh, when this used to happen to us and I'm thinking, now, wait a minute, we all in the same house, same mom and dad, what are they talking about? You know, because I don't remember Mm -hmm. The story mm-hmm. being that way, but it just really is an illustration that everybody has their own interpretation. You know, they have their right. own truth. So we have to be able to respect that and move forward and right. know that their right. truth doesn't have to 
overshadow our truth either because um right i always use the example of you know if you are looking at an elephant if i'm in the front and i'm saying yeah this this uh, animal has a long snout you know and then you're in the back saying no this one i see has a little tail you know we're talking right. about the same thing but where we're standing the view is different so my view right. as a mother exactly. would be different than my daughter who, you know, so right. that type of thing. So I get that. That's good. Now, um, yeah. so what do you do that kind of helps you just, you know, we are in this pandemic and you said, you know, this has just been one of the things with finishing this project that does give you a little anxiety, but outside of that, you know, in terms of being a mom and having your own own goals and aspirations with, you know, this project, how do you manage to do what you do every day? Oh, Lord. Um, it's tough because like I said, I do teach, but I teach at home. So okay. it's, it's, it's really hard. Um, cause like I said, I have a five-year-old and then I have a 15 year old. So he's in class and he's remote as well. So, um, it's really tough. So I learned to take moments for myself to breathe. Um, I do, I will go into work a couple of days of the week. Um, you just gotta, I don't know, this is tough. I'm not lying. It is. <laughs> it's a learning. It's every day is different. Um, and you learn to figure out the best way you can to survive this. You know, um, it hasn't been easy. Um, my sister and my niece and my nephew had COVID during this time. So oh, I'm sorry it's been that. a mess. Yeah. Now, how yeah. are they I mean, now? Fine. Do they have any side they're effects? Because I know one of my um, daughter's friends, she has different memory lapses and stuff like that. But well, mm -hmm. how about your family? How are that? My, my, my niece and my nephew are fine, but my sister still hasn't got her sense of smell back. And how long yeah, has that been? She hasn't. She had it in July. Wow. So it's been a few months and she still hasn't gotten her smell, her, her sense of smell back. So yeah, it was rough for her. For her, she had like all the symptoms and they live in Georgia. So that was like nine hours away. So, you know, just imagine talking to your sister and your nieces and nephews and they have all those symptoms. Then you can't even go, you know, I... you can't even be there. Yeah. So, yeah. Now, so where are you, where are you located? I'm in North Carolina. Okay. Yeah, I'm in Elizabeth City, North Carolina. Yeah. Okay. So we're pretty far away. So. Wow. And so oh, now, yeah. were the, did they go to the hospital or were they just at home? Um, they went, but they went home after they got tested and stuff. They kept on. They sent them home, but um, it was rough. It was a long fourteen days for sure for my sister. Wow. Um, it was it was super tough. Um, yeah. And I tore, and I like tore my ACL, like, I think like a week before that happened. So I was literally on crutches. Wow. Um, yeah. So it was, it was a rough time. <laughs> yeah. I feel it you. A rough time. Now, so what advice yeah. would you give? Like, I'm going to have one for the teachers. You know, you're a teacher. Mm -hmm. You've got your kids that are doing remote learning what advice would you give the teachers right now about, you know, just their daily routine? Take a breath. Like you have to breathe and you have to do one assignment at a time and take it day by day. Um, remember that these kids aren't in college. Like, cause it's a balance in between. You're kind of expecting these kids to be college students mm -hmm. and they're not. Um, I think we really got to figure that balance out of how to get the information to them, but not overload them mm -hmm. with busy work or just to say you're doing something. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. You know, it's really tough. Um, yeah, I understand that every situation is not a good situation um, for I kids. Am. Sometimes school is heaven for kids compared to what they deal with at home. Right. So this being home all the time is tough for kids yeah that's so, so true 
And I think also, you know, um, sometimes we have to explore going back to some of the older uh, methods, you know, like yeah. now, especially, you know, it is to me, like I just envision kids doing more um, writing, you know, mm -hmm. reflecting during this time, mm -hmm. you know, because you can be a little kid and still reflect, you know, if you're mm -hmm. teaching them how to write sentences and paragraphs, they can be writing mm -hmm. sentences and paragraphs about this time they're living in. Mm -hmm. You know, there has to be some way that, you know, the, the education can be bridged with real life that can yeah. give them the tools that they need to take moments to deal with, man, you know, how is it when it's, when you're not with your friends every day? You know, mm -hmm. how does that make mm -hmm. you feel and ways to express that in a positive way? Right. So absolutely. Um, with that being said, what advice as a teacher would you give the parents, you know, about this whole um, situation <laughs> with remote learning? <laughs> um, um, teacher appreciation week <laughs> to look a lot different. <laughs> Oh. You should I, absolutely get your teacher stuff for teacher appreciation because if truth. you don't appreciate what teachers do after all of this, then you never will. Like so true, <laughs> so true. Honestly, honestly, yeah. um, and some of the things that teachers are saying sometimes about your kids, I hope you're learning that it is true. <laughs> um, I'm sorry. I mean, that's true. I mean, you know, we get the parents that say my kid doesn't do this. Right. But now that you're actually home with them every single day and you have to make them work, I hope you realize that some of this, you know, we're not lying about everything. It's you know. so true. So true. Um, so, but um, no, you're not a teacher to the parents. No, you're not a teacher, but, you know, be patient. I'm not a kindergarten teacher. I'm a teacher, but I'm not a kindergarten teacher. Right. <laughs> Big difference. <laughs> Big difference. I, I don't know what they went to school for. So hey. I get it. It's a struggle. Hey. Um, because I don't know what they look for. So it is right. a really tough deal. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, learn to appreciate your teachers and what they do because it is a lot that goes into it. You're just getting a little taste of what we go through every single day. Um, not just with your kids, but with everybody's kids. It's in that hard. right. In that right. Yeah. It's now tough, we're underpaid. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> hey, out there. <laughs> I'm with you on that. Look, I I I do it every day, and uh, you can't pay me enough, okay? But what I, I what I experience, a girl with eight of them, I'm yeah. paying by gray hair and uh, other things. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, it's a tough deal. So appreciate your teachers. I'm serious. Be nice to them because they do a great job and we are up against a lot. Like yes. it's a lot. Yeah. It's a now, lot. now so do you guys have any um resources for the for the teachers in terms of you know talking to you about ways to manage stress or you know uh overwhelm and things like that? You know what? I haven't really heard about this. No. Oh, okay. okay. That no, might be something. I mean, to, yeah. Yeah. And that is something that we need because it is overwhelming, um, especially like at the beginning, like of the school year, it was real overwhelming at first. Um, Cause last year was totally different than this year. When we first got out, everybody was thrown into it. So it was just kind of, you know, nobody ego. knew. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nobody knew. But this year, they kind of made it structured and, you know, on a schedule. So it was a whole lot different trying to wheel the kids in, you know, knowing that they were going to get the grade that they left the school with. Now trying to convince them that, oh, you have to do some work now. So it's totally really? different now. Um, yeah. So, um, yeah, it's, it's been a stressful time. For <laughs> I, I feel We're making you. it through. We're getting through it. We're Yeah. Every one day, day at a time now yeah. so um is so is your whole school system doing uh remote then or do they do hybrids or what we're doing both uh -huh. so we do have kids in school now we just started transitioning kids in school so we do have kids in school and we have some at home so okay yeah that's, that's even me. tougher i know now yeah. so do you guys have it where you have to have your computer talking to the remote learners while you talking to the classroom 
type of setup. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's yes, hard. and that's um absolutely hard. Um, yes. Because I mean, it's a balancing act. Because now you have to remember your kids on camera as well as the ones in school, as if it wasn't already hard enough. Yeah. Now you got to do both. Um, I, I think the school systems could have went about it a little bit differently. I think they could have asked teachers who wanted to stay home, who wanted to be in the building, and kind of worked out grade levels and subject levels like that, so that you wouldn't have to do both. You right. know, you got remote right. teachers and you got remote teachers. Yeah. I mean, birth, you know, one on one, you know, face to face teachers. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think it would have came out better. But right now, it's so overwhelming to teachers trying to figure out how do I not forget about this group of kids and this group of I, kids. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it makes you know, it and then mix with then mix with all the populations because your kids with IEPs, oh. it's really tough for them as well. So and everybody's in the same. It, so now the special ed are not separated then. No, because oh. if they're still in regular class, it's still. You know, teachers usually come in and help or something like that. It's hard. It's hard. Girl, I'm, I'm, you know, you're in my prayers. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I need to, look. I need to get you a superwoman cake. Okay. Yes. Hey, because that's every, some stuff every right there. Needs one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> every Definitely. teacher needs one. Uh-huh. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, this has been very informative, so. and um, I hope everybody's <laughs> taking notes and appreciate your teachers. I mean, she's brought up some good points and, you know, we have this thing of feeling, oh, woe is me, but these are our kids, right? Yeah. You know, if you yeah. appear at, you at home with your kids, what you complaining about? She's right. responsible for other people's kids. So we need to be mindful of that. So uh, yeah. I want to thank you I so say much. all the time that I'm glad I like my kids. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that right? My parents, they don't like their... <laughs> they don't. You know, and it's so funny because we have the situation where the kids can go back. And I'm like, I'm at home with my kids. And I know they're like, what? You know, you got eight kids. Girl, I'll be sending them off to school. I'm like, uh-uh. I enjoy my kids, okay? And I it's want them right. safe. I'm not trying to put them in harm's way. You right. know what I'm saying? So I got to do what's best for me. But um, mm-hmm. so what is the best way for the audience to get a hold of you? Um, I'm on I'm on Facebook and I'm Candace okay. Rainey, Candace Riddick mm-hmm. Rainey. Okay. Um, on Instagram, I'm just K with five K. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, so awesome. But yeah. And what final words would you want to end uh with with the audience? Um, let me see. Um, go with whatever is in you, whatever that little burning thing in you is, go for it. Don't be scared. It's always going to be a what if at the end of the day. Um, go for it because that's the thing that you're supposed to be actually doing. Um, it's not going to go away, it's going to keep coming back. So go ahead and buckle down deal with everything all the emotions and all the fear and do it scared and go for it and um put yourself out there don't be scared you know sky's the limit for everybody beyond saying who she is just because we can all be that you know we just don't everybody just doesn't take that drive that push you know and go for it so go for it hey that's wise yeah. words, just like Nike, just do it. So that's some good stuff. Absolutely. So we want to thank you guys so much for watching today. We want to thank Candace for all her wealth of wisdom and insight. And we're going to keep her lifted up in prayer with the stuff she's dealing with as a teacher. But many of us <laughs> have been challenged with a lot. So, you know, we want to be mindful of looking at how we can support and help one another. And just like she said, something as simple as teacher appreciation week this is something that's already been set aside but go that extra mile and think about how you can make things easier for them and show them that you appreciate all the sacrifices that they're doing not just in their own life but in the lives of others dealing with 
our children, right? So um, right. thank you guys so much for watching and uh, be on the lookout for her book because uh, it's got a great message and follow her on Instagram. So we want to thank you yes. guys so much for watching today and we will see y'all the next time.